Hey guys, I'm Darko and next to me is Philips 55 POS 7805. It's a TV that runs Philips Ceph EOS Smart TV platform. And in this video, I'll focus specifically on the platform. I'll show you home menu, settings, connectivity, voice assistance, and I'll give you a better feel of what kind of performance you should expect from such TV. So if you're interested, keep watching this video. This is home menu. This is the menu you will see when you press home button on the remote control. And it's semi-transparent. It's located in lower half of the screen. And it's got three rows. First one with five sections. Below you see specific icons for that uh, section. And then certain apps like Netflix have additional row which allows you to jump straight to content of that particular app. If we go, for example, to Amazon Alexa, here you will only see name and basically, again, same name, but for Prime Video, you will also get some description. Uh, so this, you know, helps if you're not sure what the app is about, then you will get some description and it might help you uh, decide whether or not you want to use it or you want to remove it from the home menu. Speaking of removing or adding apps, uh, first of all, you can arrange the layout as you want. So in order to rearrange it, you can either a long press OK button on the remote, or if you go to the right, to the very end, you have edit button. So I'll press OK. And right now I'm in edit mode. So I can click on whichever app I want, for example, internet browser, and I can move it wherever I want, or if needed, I can delete the app. We will skip it, we will just put it next to Prime Video. But for example, let's, let's delete certain app. Uh, right now I'm in, okay, Filmbox, so, and that's it, it's removed. Uh, once I'm finished with editing, I can press back button and I'm back to browsing home menu like usual. Um, important thing is, and this applies to all sections, once you enter the section, if you press the arrow down, you will always come to the third option. So when you're arranging apps, make sure that third app is the one you will use most frequently. Uh, and also the one next to it should be something you frequently use. You can do the same, for example, for sources, USB. If you're frequently opening content via USB, then you can put it here, but let's do a long press of OK button and let's put UHB, UHD Blu-ray player on the third position. So now let's go to sources. I'm right on UHD Blu-ray player input. So, you know, this, this will help you get to the content you want quicker. Another option you have in home menu is ability to search for apps and content on YouTube. So, you can enter text using navigation buttons on the remote control. Uh, there is no ability to use built-in microphone, uh, but you can connect USB keyboard and let's enter, for example, uh, YouTube. I hope it will react. No, nothing. And can I? do something yes all right all right okay so let's search for youtube enter all right so you see video results and then if you go here to apps you will see youtube and youtube kids apps are available and you can open them like this Next, we have settings menu where you have different options, either to access picture settings, quickly change picture style, 
enter all settings or if you need some help there is how to and also at the end you have full help section uh, you can also edit these icons at their position so as I was doing calibration I had to enter picture settings hundreds of times so I put it on third position and um, also another thing is currently I have YouTube app in the background and if I want to enter all settings I will get this notification so TV needs to exit the app in order to open all settings and all settings is very familiar layout for Philips TVs you have different sections picture sound Ambilite, wireless and networks, channels, general settings, universal access, child lock, region and language, and update software. Next we have watch TV section, so if you're watching live TV then you will uh, have ability to record content and access recordings here see channels, access TV guide, also uh, you can enter satellite uh, viewing of channels here or also antenna ones and again ability to edit this menu as you like whichever option is uh, the most frequently used you can have it straight here on the third position and let's see what we have on live TV so I can simply click on antenna first I need to exit edit mode okay click antenna all right and then uh, if I want to access TV guide I can do it straight from the remote control and as you can see TV guide is occupying the entire screen and there is no small small window showing live TV so uh, once you're in uh, this TV guide you cannot see live TV at the same time I'll press back button so we're back to live TV info button will show you information about the channel here and so on and there's also settings button on the remote where you have program info subtitles audio language and so on available here teletext which you can access through here or through text button on the remote final option in home menu is sources where you have different options from screen mirroring accessing network content then different HDMI inputs and again edit button for rearrangement of this submenu uh, as you can see I changed names of HDMI inputs UHD Blu-ray player computer game console uh, you can do that in all settings menu under inputs and now uh, let's do a little uh, cycling through different apps so uh, right now I'm in YouTube app now let's go to live TV so I can press this TV exit button between plus and minus and I will jump straight to live TV all right so we're here next let's open Netflix all right we're in it's responsive good then let's go to YouTube okay yeah again this video uh, let's see Rakuten TV app so let's see Rakuten Okay, loading. All right, we're in. And then let's go to sources and open something on my network server. Uh, Caster Troy. 
Uh, let's go to video. Tests. Let's play some 4K content. Um, let's see. Um, all right, let's see if this will work. All right, this was recorded at uh, 4K 60 frames per second. So there is some stuttering. Uh, let's see some 24p content. Uh, maybe something for HDR10. Uh, let's see how this will work. All right, so far looks good. Yeah, depends on the content. This built-in media player uh, is generally running okay for 24p content, but 60 uh, hertz 4K that's causing some some issues. All right, and uh, we can go back to live TV. And here we are. Yes, and I can quickly adjust volume and so on. Now let's turn off the TV. Let's see. Backlight turned on. USB mouse and here we are. So you see a couple of seconds and if we want home menu, we have it straight away. This TV also has Amazon Alexa built in. There is a microphone right here and button to call Alexa. So uh, you can open the app and here you will uh, have ability to configure it first time you enter, but also you have some tips and settings. So if we go to settings, here you will see which options are available. Uh, so uh, for example, you can use Alexa even if TV is in standby, but you need to enable this option. And it's a little strange that off is on the right, on is on the left, but now uh, with this setting, power consumption will be higher in standby, but I'll just show you how it works. Turn on test room lights. Yes, okay. Turn off test room lights. Trigger heating. So now Alexa will turn on heating in my house. Uh, but TV is in standby, which is cool. Uh, also, Another thing which is very cool with every Philips TV that has Ambilight, you can use Ambilight even if TV is in standby. So pressing Ambilight button, you will have different options here, different colors. And just, you know, for a nicer atmosphere with some music, you can keep screen turned off and this backlight turned on, which is really nice. You can also jump straight to Netflix from standby if you press Netflix button. Also to live TV and so on. So you don't need necessarily to uh, turn on the TV with power on button. This TV has Opera browser built in. You can access it through home menu. And if you connect keyboard and mouse, you can uh, easily navigate and, and go to different websites. Um, uh, you can also see history tabs and also use bookmarks. Uh, for example, let's go to this one to see which browser is built in and which version. So actually we see here that 
this TV is using showing up. Ah, okay, finally. So you see, Opera 36 on Linux operating system. And current version is 73, this is version 36. And you see, I can navigate and so on. Um, so let's open this website that you see the speed. All right, and you see scrolling. Sometimes uh, browser would freeze and react very slowly, uh, but you know, to visit something on the big screen, if you need some information, it's, it's useful. Here, if we press this icon, you can add website to speed dial, you can add it to bookmarks, you have page security details, private tabs, settings, help, and uh, that's basically it. Here you can zoom in and also clear history. Finally, we have demo me section where you have different options. If TV is in shop mode, then you have this shop setup. Otherwise, you can manage demos and also access demo videos. There is this one in Dolby Vision and also with Dolby Atmos Sound. So very nice to show off. Definitely this was not <laughs> my intention. Uh, something happened. Let me repeat the process. Demo me, demo videos, click OK. All right, this is much better. So Dolby Vision plus Dolby Atmos. You can easily check if everything is OK with picture. And yeah, uh, it looks really, really nice. And with this, guys, I came to the end of this presentation. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that you saw something new today, maybe learned some new trick. Uh, definitely platform is modern in its way to, to not occupy the entire screen with its home menu. Uh, it offers different options, you have certain flexibility when it comes to customization. Uh, on the other hand, there are sometimes these drops in responsiveness, which I saw several times, and also sometimes apps were not working correctly, like you saw this demo me when it jumped to live TV. Uh, same is with web browser and so on. So. Uh, it's not perfect platform, but for mainstream TV, I would say it's, it's acceptable. I see audience for it. On the other hand, uh, for the same price, you could see competitors offering uh, more responsive platform uh, with more apps, especially those international apps uh, like Disney+. Plus. And yeah, at the end, I really recommend that you take a look at my other hands-on videos and really decide what, what's important for you. Uh, would you uh, maybe uh, forget some downsides of uh, this platform uh, and in return get Ambilight, which is a really cool feature, or you want something else and then deal with lighting and ambience in some other way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Like it if this video was useful. Share and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.